In this talk, let's review non-Parkinsonian movement disorders. So let's begin with tremor. Tremor is a rhythmic, involuntary, oscillating movement of a body part occurring in isolation or as a part of a clinical syndrome. So we can see isolated tremors or tremor that means something else is going on. Some other syndrome is causing it. Importantly, it is rhythmic. So tremors should always be rhythmic and they should oscillate about a limb or a joint or, um, that, and that results in the movement of the body part. When we think about tremor, there are several types of tremors that we can remember. The first is a rest tremor. This occurs when the limb is at rest. We often see it in the hands or in the feet and sometimes in the head. The limb should be supported against gravity when we're evaluating this and the muscles should not be activated. And the classic uh, syndrome diagnosis that we see rest tremor with is Parkinson's disease, but we can also see it with drug-induced Parkinsonisms and occasionally some of the other Parkinson's plus syndromes. The second type of tremor is an action tremor. This is tremor occurring with action, and that means any voluntary muscle contraction. And there are several different types of action tremor that we can see. The first is a postural tremor, and this is a tremor when the limbs are maintained in a position against gravity. We often test this with having the patient move their arms in a rested position out in front of them. Types of postural tremor include physiologic tremor and benign essential tremor. We can see postural tremor in both of those conditions. Kinetic tremor. Kinetic tremor is tremor occurring with action, and we typically see this tremor with simple, targeted, or target-directed movements. And so we can evaluate this on exam by looking at spirals, and we're looking for tremor that's occurring with the spiral. We can ask the patient to drink a cup of water and looking for movement of the water or spillage of the water. And we can see kinetic tremors um, with uh, various lesions, including benign essential tremor, which is the classic condition to see a kinetic tremor. Isometric tremor is a rare action tremor that occurs with muscle contraction against the stationary object. And we can see this in the setting of orthostatic tremor, which is extremely rare and one to be aware of, but probably not to um, devote significant time to. And then there are also task-specific tremors that occur with a specific action. I mean, think of handwriting. Some of us have had uh, a tremor with a significant or prolonged handwriting, and that's a dystonic tremor or a task-specific tremor. And then finally is intention tremor. An intention tremor is, inten is a tremor that worsens as we get closer to a target. Um, and that tremor is something that we see with cerebellar lesions, such as multiple sclerosis, or occasionally with cerebellar strokes. Let's talk about some common tremors and some syndromes that we see those in. Uh, first, physiologic tremor. We all have a tremor. It's just a part of being human. It's benign, it's high frequency, it's low amplitude, so it's really quick and often can't be seen very well due to the low amplitude nature, and it's usually not visible. We can see it in certain settings, and in those settings, we will see an enhanced physiologic tremor, and this is a visible, high frequency postural tremor that occurs in the absence of neurologic disease, but there are some causes of this. Stress is uh, probably one of the most common. Increased caffeine intake can enhance our underlying physiologic tremor. Sleep deprivation, we've all had a little bit of sleep deprivation and this will enhance our physiologic tremor. As well as thyrotoxico thyrotoxicosis, hypoglycemia, certain drugs like amphetamines, and withdrawal from various agents including alcohol and benzodiazepines. The enhanced physiologic tremor isn't a problem doesn't require evaluation. It typically doesn't require treatment unless it interferes with activities of living. Let's talk a little bit about a common condition where we see a kinetic tremor or action tremor, and that is benign essential tremor or benign familial tremor. Here we see a visible postural tremor in the upper limbs that may include a kinetic component. So we can see both kinetic and postural tremor. This is one of the most common movement disorders that we see, and it tends to run in families. And we hear this, this called in many families as a familial tremor, where my grandmother or grandfather and mother and father and I and children may have it. It's passed down into families. Uniquely, this tremor gets better with alcohol, and that can be a supportive historical detail um, that supports a diagnosis of benign familial or benign essential tremor. The clinical manifestations that we see in this syndrome include postural tremor that's often in the distal arm in 95% of patients. 
It usually begins symmetrically in both arms. It can be insidious in its development and very slow in its progression. It can get worse over time as individuals age. It can involve the head, and we call that head titubation, where the head tilts in a yes-yes or even a no-no movement, and that's not uncommon in patients with benign familial tremor. And things like stress fatigue medications can increase the amplitude, and alcohol can reduce the amplitude. We don't encourage alcohol as a treatment, but it can be an important diagnostic tool when um, taking a history for these patients. So let's compare essential tremor and Parkinsonian tremor and Parkinson's disease. And let's look at some of the clinical features that differentiate these two tremors and conditions. So with Parkinson's disease, we often see the onset around the age of 50s. With essential tremor, there's a bimodal distribution. We can see essential tremor early in teens or in individuals over the age of 50. Parkinson's disease is more common in men um, than women, and essential tremor is equal, uh, equally reported in both men and women. We can see a family history in Parkinson's disease and around 25 or up to 25% of patients. Family history is extremely common in patients with essential tremor. The vast majority will report a familial history of some type. Parkinson's disease tremor, the rest tremor in Parkinson's disease is typically asymmetric, but often symmetric. Um, the tremor is uh, symmetric in essential tremor. The character of the tremor in Parkinson's disease is rest, and the character and nature of the tremor in essential tremor is postural and kinetic. Parkinsonian rest tremor is um, lower frequency, 4 to 6 hertz, and we can see a higher frequency tremor in benign essential tremor, the postural and kinetic tremor in essential tremor. The distribution of the tremor in Parkinson's disease is hands and legs, whereas in essential tremor, we can see hands as well as that head titubation. Alcohol doesn't change Parkinsonian tremor, but can reduce the tremor in essential tremor. And in Parkinson's disease, we should see associated findings of bradykinesia, rigidity, and postural instability. So in patients presenting with a new complaint of tremor, we want to differentiate. Is this a rest tremor that's unaffected by alcohol, that's pre predominant in the hands and asymmetric and associated with Parkinsonian features, and that's a Parkinsonian tremor? Or is this something that's symmetric, running in the family? It's a high-frequency tremor, maybe involving the hands and head, and maybe reduced by alcohol, and that's suggestive of a diagnosis of essential tremor. How do we treat benign essential tremor? We can think about cardioselective agents like beta blockers, and propranolol is a common agent that is used, or antiepileptics, and primidone is the most common agent to use. Uh, and the goal of these is to reduce um, the severity uh, and functional impairment of the tremor. Botulinism toxin can be used, particularly if there's an associated voice tremor. And occasionally, thalamic deep brain stimulation can be used in particularly severe cases. The next type of tremor is Holmes tremor, or rubral tremor. And this is rare. It's a combination of three types of tremors, rest, action, and postural tremor. And it looks quite dramatic because we have tremors going on at all um, types of movement and rest. This is caused by lesions typically affecting the brainstem or the cerebellar outflow in the superior cerebellar peduncle or thalamus. In terms of clinical manifestations, we see other findings that result from brainstem dysfunction and prominent uh, tremor, both rest action and postural tremors. Uniquely, rubral tremor can result in a wing beating tremor. That's a proximal upper extremity tremor that's seen with the arms outstretched and, uh, and bent at the elbows, and we see a wing beating appearance, which is um, highly suggestive of a rubral tremor. In terms of treatment, pharmacologic treatment is usually initiated and can be, um, uh, is often ineffective in these patients. Uh, levodopa, anticholinergics, and clonazepam can be attempted, and thalamic deep brain stimulation um, has been performed in patients.